I agree. I, I was gonna I was gonna ask as well. Um, this time around, will the police be waiting for our gentleman outside? Because that's that's the coup de grace. Oh, that's, that's so satisfying. That's, that's the cherry on there. top. Well, they, yes, we will have a, a police will be doing a, a parallel investigation as it, it, you know in most of the investigations we did in To Catch a Predator. Um, you know, the first two we did, we did not uh, have police doing a parallel investigation, and you know, two things happened. One, it was a little unsatisfying for the viewers to see this guy just walk off into the sunset. And even though police did and prosecutors did make cases against some of these guys, including the rabbi and the naked guy and, and some of the others, um, it, it made more sense to kind of involve the police and let them do their own investigation and get their own version of the transcripts from our online, dec online decoys and take it from there. Are you, what was the most shocking, the most bizarre thing um, that either you read in the transcripts or perhaps the, the, the suspect did once they got to the decoy house? Because I've seen and heard so many things, and, and, and I, sometimes I feel like I can read it on your face while, when you're right. conducting that. You're just, what were you thinking? You're, you know, you, you don't almost, you, I, are you ever embarrassed reading the transcripts? Yes. That's, yes. Thank you. <laughs> 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 And you have to remember that I'm not just responsible to my audience or to my bosses, uh, which I am, but I'm also responsible to, you know, my kids, uh, friends, parents, teachers at the schools and, and all that stuff. I mean, you know, there have been examples where, you know, I've had a kid sitting in a class in college where suddenly they're showing, you know, to catch a predator shows. And, and he's, you know, do I say that's my dad? Do I give that up? Do I, do I want that kind of scrutiny? You know, what, what do I do here? And, and it's, a, it's a big debate. And, and, you know, we try to be just graphic enough to show what these guys are capable of doing without being offensive. And, mm -hmm. and I think, I hope that we, you know, tiptoed along that fine line. But, yeah, I mean, in terms of what the most graphic moment was or disturbing moment, I mean, it's, it's a 25-way tie for first. I mean, we had two naked guys, <laughs> one who wanted to conduct a sex act with a young girl and a cat and whipped cream and, and all kinds of stuff. That and guy. walked in and showed up uh, again the second day and, and a guy who showed up in, in Fort Myers, Florida with his five-year-old son to walk in the house. And that, you know, silenced everybody. I mean, was, and I he brought ask, his kid? He brought his kid, yeah. yeah. And you got to imagine, see, I work with a group of guys on this who've been with me in the darkest corners of the world, whether it's, you know, in Africa doing, you know, uh, thievery stories when it comes to identity theft and all kinds of things, or, or uh, Al-Qaeda using blood diamonds to, to launder, you know, terrorist funds. I mean, these guys have been around the world with me. And in this one scene, this guy pulls up. He's the last guy in an investigation, as I said, in Fort Myers, Florida. He pulls up in his SUV. He goes to the back door, and I'm thinking he's going to pull out a pizza and a, you know, six-pack. Instead, he leads his five-year-old son out by the hand, walk up, walks up the driveway, into the house. Now, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. A collective gasp goes out in the house. And so he walks in, and I said to him, you know, uh, on the fly, I said, look, you know why you're here. I know why you're here. I'm Chris Hansen, and I'm just going to let you go because I don't want to traumatize your son with whom you brought. And, and – uh, he left, and the police arrested him and gently scooped up the son, and, you know, that was it. But it was, it was just so shocking that somebody would, would do that on a Sunday was, afternoon. I, I feel I have to ask, was he planning to involve the son in some sort of sex act, or was he just so. babysitting yeah, you know, for the day? He was babysitting for the day. His wife was at work. Um, I think he was going to go set him in another room and watch Barney videos or whatever and, and uh, you, know, uh, you know, go do his thing with a, you know, 13- or 14-year-old boy. And, uh, you know, the shocking part of it was, the, was the, the back story to that, which was he had to move out of his house because child services said you can't be in there during this investigation. Ultimately, he moves into the house. The child has moved to Ralto's house. He's living there and, you know, ha has another child with the mother before he goes to trial and, and gets a four-year prison sentence. And it just really... You know, the lesson of that is, and, and what we're going to do with the new series is we're going to try and do more of the front story and the back story. In other words, we're going to try to have more information about this person uh, before they actually come to the house. So, you know, we see a scenario where there could be surveillance 
and you know show this person doing if it's a teacher we show them teaching if it's a doctor we show them you know practicing medicine we do whatever we have to do and then you have more context that's of brilliant it's coming from and doing so that's how I do think you gather it though like it's well we you know we're going to have to do research and we we have a strategic alliance with LexisNexis and in um, security solutions and other other um you know data mining uh, outfits and and you know we're, we're going to be able to do it that's going to be brilliant. That's, that's going to create gonna a whole cool. narrative. There's going to be drama. You'll be able exactly. to exactly. I mean, that's you, you going to be excellent. Watch the person, you know, as much as we can, you know, build into the, into the situation. Now, you know, in the past investigations, obviously, we've been able to know something about the people. We knew the rabbi was the rabbi. We knew the doctor was a doctor. We knew the the police officer was a police officer. But you know, this actually gives us the ability to you know to paint a a better picture of who this and perhaps is. to follow them bef on perhaps to follow them beforehand. Maybe you follow them to the exactly drugstore right. they go to okay. to purchase those condoms and uh, that would create a that would be great as a viewing experience yeah. like, um and i'm wondering have you ever been so angry or upset with one of these guys that that you're sitting across from that that you've actually wanted to hit them like these these when you hear what these guys are there for and when you see oh, there have the to guys, be some because some of them have an attitude it seems like there's like you know yeah. just here you know doing my thing what's your problem like, oh i'm just here to rape a kid like yeah. you have to want to punish One those kid. fucks well you know i understand what you're getting at i mean my job is not to mete out punishment my job is to to get these people to sit and talk and get in their brains so i can better understand the way they think so we can better protect our children yes as 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 a parent of two uh, sons did I sometimes feel a sense of outrage? Of course. It's not my position to get in a fight. I mean, I was more worried about, okay, where are their hands? What do they got going on? You know, yeah. you know, even though we had tons of security and we will in the next uh, investigations, you know, there's a lot going on. And you have to, you're watching a lot of different things. You're, you're trying to go through the transcripts. You're trying to engage the guy. I mean, anybody can jump out of the bushes and scare somebody and make them run off and create, you know, 30 seconds of dramatic television. My goal with this and with any other investigation I've done is to get them to sit, talk, and get in their minds. You know, and that's what we were able to do, and that's what made this and unique and what will make the new investigation. <clears throat> so well, on the flip side of that, was there ever a time where you came across someone as you walked into that kitchen where you thought, oh, Jesus, like this guy doesn't look like a bad guy or doesn't sound like a bad guy. Was there ever a time where you came in and you wished, just wished this guy had thought better of himself? Like, well, I mean, obviously there there were some cases where you know you feel sympathy for these guys, and you know they they break down into three different categories. And I'm not a psychiatrist and, and you know um, or an expert in this field, but based on my experience, you've got the hardcore heavy hitters who'd be doing this with or without the internet. You've got this group in the middle who have a predilection for it but wouldn't be doing it unless they had the internet and the addictive quality and the 24-hour access and, you know, the anonymity, you know, the three A's. And then you've got this, this other group, you know, guys in the early 20s who are, you know, not very social and they see a 14-year-old girl online they figure, well, it's only eight years difference and in 10 years it won't make a difference at all and, and they go for it. You know, those are the guys who can probably be given probation and registration as a sex offender and computer monitoring and a rap on the hand and never do it again. The other guys, you know, it's a different story. Um, you know, we, we had, you know, three-time offenders in some of these cases walk in. Well, you had uh, you mentioned earlier the the gentleman who came two days in a row, I think, or uh, yeah. it's it's absurd. Um, uh, getting going at that point, what's the farthest distance or the greatest lengths that someone uh, ever hmm. went to uh, to get to that house? I think we had somebody drive about five hours. I think it was the greatest five to six hours, and I, um, that happened on a couple of occasions. You know, from one side of one state to the other, or from another state down. I mean, we had a guy <clears throat> who was actually a police officer in a small town at the Alabama-Florida border, who he'd been online all week, and he was just a really graphic chatter. And, you know, some of these guys just chat, and they never show up. I mean, probably 40% of them. So we shut down one night early for us because we would work till 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, the, the day before. And uh, we get back to the hotel, and suddenly his cell phones are going off, and it's the decoy calling saying, this guy just called from a payphone. He said he went by the house, and it was dark. Now, there's no one switch to turn on the Predator house. I mean, this takes a lot of uh, engineers to put this together. So what ended up happening was the police made a traffic stop. And in fact, the guy was a police officer. He had a 38 caliber gun in his pocket. Uh, in his car, he had an assault rifle, a shotgun, and a 45. <clears throat> Hundreds of rounds of ammunition. 
and a video camera and an anchor and duct tape and bulletproof vests. I mean, you know, God knows what would happen if it showed up. And people always ask, you know, did you ever feel there was a time when you dodged a bullet? And I think yeah, that was the time, you know. I can't imagine what the anchor was for. He would <laughs> tie it to a body, perhaps, and throw it into a body of water? It's, it's hard Could to speculate. I mean, maybe he had a boat. I mean, he was an outdoorsman. I mean, maybe he you know, wouldn't have used any of the guns at all. But course, I, yeah, like, that's true. have well. to find out, you know? As you like laid out that laundry list, I was thinking, like, I've got all that stuff in my Yeah, car. right. I was like, a thirty eight. <laughs> that's not that big a deal. <laughs> His whole rifle was bothersome, though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Kyle. The assault rifle was bothersome. <laughs> How do you feel about it's, that? that you know, it, it, <laughs> well, it, it's definitely bothersome when you've got a, a pedophile coming to the decoy house with one. You wouldn't want How do 